Yo guys, I'm Jack, and today we're going to talk about nutrition, diet, the way we eat, and the three main factors that affect my choices, and that is health, environmental sustainability, and ethics. So, let's get into it. So I had a request from Seeker of Vision to talk about nutrition, or the way I eat, my thoughts on uh, diet and all of that stuff. First off, I don't really like to think of it as diet, because to me it has the connotation of doing something different for a short period of time. I like to just think of the way I eat. I think a healthy relationship with food is one which is intuitive and based on a number of factors, health, ethics, sustainability. Now these factors interrelate and they affect one another, but they're not necessarily the same. And that's why when we're talking about nutrition, we have to acknowledge which direction we're coming at it from and what the outcome that we're looking for is. For example, I don't think that the healthiest ways to eat are necessarily the most ethical. And I don't necessarily think that the most ethical ways to eat are the most sustainable. But you can see how these things get complicated very quickly because all three matter. And um, if we're doing something grossly unethical, then, and we're aware of that, and there's an inner conflict, that will affect our health. So here's a big one. Our perception around what we put in our body, in the food we eat, affects how it is processed, uh, assimilated, digested, uh, and metabolized. This is a fact, placebo, nocebo, the biology of belief. So that's one factor I consider. If I'm going to eat something, I'm not gonna eat it with a sense of guilt. It's gonna be gratitude. Even if I know that someone or something has suffered to be on my plate, if I'm gonna eat it, I'm gonna damn well enjoy it. And if I'm feeling uh, discord or unsettled or disharmony, then I'm not gonna eat it. I'm trying to be clearer and clearer on that for myself so that my body takes in what I'm ready to take in. This is something that comes from Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, a bunch of Eastern ways of thinking about food. Um, so that's kind of the perception slash ethics element partially covered. I'm not a vegan, so I do eat meat, but I don't care for carnivore diets or vegan diets or paleo diets or if it fits your macros diets or Atkins or blah, I like couldn't give a fuck. I eat what I feel is good for me at every layer, sort of mind, body, spirit, if you wanted to split it up into three. When I feel clear mentally, energized and stable physically, and when I'm really enjoying my food uh, and I feel that I'm morally in the right place, I'm happy with how I'm eating. If I'm feeling puffy, tired, brain foggy, um, lethargic, guilty, that's something I steer clear of. So I don't like to eat in ways that make me feel like that. Now, how you should apply this depends on your views, your perspective, your biology, your genetics, how you assimilate certain foods. All of these things are gonna be factors you will consider in making your own decision. I don't want you to copy what I do just because I say it. You need to find your own way. Food is an integral part of life and your views upon food and digestion are often reflective of your relationship with life and death and with many other parts of your character. So as a meat eater, I fall on a spectrum of ethical or more ethical to less ethical. I don't know where I fall, but I'm attempting to eat uh, more locally sourced meat. I'm attempting to eat organic, uh, I want to know, ideally, that what I'm eating hasn't travelled eight hours dehydrated in the back of a fucking truck uh, and was then beaten up and then suffered before dying because I don't, no one wants that, right? So when I do get meat, uh, I don't always do this, but I, when I can afford it, buy from Provenir, which is a company that does on-farm slaughter and processing. So they drive a mobile abattoir out to the farm 
uh, at least for the cattle and most of the animals, and they're killed and processed in the same place they live. Death is a part of this. So the other thing is sustainability. I think regenerative ag agriculture is awesome. Um, when you have a piece of land where multiple things can grow and flourish, it's not monocrop. You've got like different kinds of plant, different kinds of animal life. Then that piece of land, if it's a given size, is more productive and more life filled and it's more of a home for more things. And I think that's good. I think that's what we should strive towards. On the other end, you've got like the meat industry stuffing animals full of hormones, feeding them shit tons of wheat or corn or whatever the hell they feed them. I don't like that. And I don't like that kind of monocrop agriculture model either because it depletes the soil. The soil becomes unfarmable and unusable after a certain amount of time. And it's very, very, very hard to recover the health of that soil. I don't know that much about this, but I do know that silt is often um, drained off the top of the land because it doesn't absorb moisture and ends up in, in rivers and water systems and then that causes problems further down the line. So regenerative, locally sourced, close to nature um, is ideal. Then it's a matter of population and how we manage population um, because we do have to be aware that the more people there are, the more restrictions we're going to face on our resources and how we deal with those restrictions will be pivotal. Like, are we all going to end up eating insect bars to get our protein? Are we going to eat fake meat? Are we going to just eat more grains and more oats? Personally, I find that when I eat a lot of grains, I eat a lot of like high yield, low, nutri low nutritional value food, I feel not so good. So I usually avoid grains, I avoid refined sugars. Uh, yeah, like seed and vegetable oils, uh, not too, not too flash about. I have a lot of saturated fats like coconut oil, avocado, olive oil, butter, ghee. I think that stuff's great. I think the only problem you can have with this stuff, like the high fat, high protein and red meat diet is if you combine it with other things like the junk that, uh, a lot of Americans eat, for example, and I know this because I lived there for a while, like, you know, you've got your, your white bread and your meat, and then maybe you add like potato chips and then you have a drink of alcohol or sugar with it. Then I, I sort of feel that that doesn't interact well, but I think a super clean meat based diet is fine. Um, yeah, I don't eat a lot of vegetables, to be honest. I have a lot of fruit and berries. I have some nuts but I don't really eat that many dark leafy greens and stuff just because um, it doesn't always charge my batteries in the same way that it does seem to for others. Uh, what else? What else is a factor here? Yeah, low inflammation. A diet which promotes good gut health. How do you know if you have a good gut? Well, you're probably not farting too much and if you do, it doesn't smell too bad. You're probably not going to the toilet too much. And when you do go to the toilet, it's pretty regular, like clockwork, maybe once a day. I think if you're going frequently and it smells or it's irregular or you, you're bloated or you're burping all the time or your skin's not clear or your brain's foggy, that's a sign that something is either in the process of adapting or something's not doing too well and you need to look into food intolerances. Elimination diets. Carnivore. Vegan. Uh, anything which just eliminates a food completely. Um, not super into either. I think it's good to have a little bit of a tolerance to many different food groups, even if you don't have them a lot. So like, I'm not a purist when it comes to alcohol. I hardly ever drink, but I will occasionally have a little bit. Personally, I prefer to get my kicks in other ways, but I think it's good to have a little bit of exposure to things to maintain like a healthy iron gut. Uh, you don't want to become too fragile and too careful because you see that as well. People become neurotic about what they eat and your perception affects how you assimilate the food. So if you look at your plate and in front of you, you see this huge ethical conundrum and you see death and suffering on your plate and you feel guilty as you eat, that is not good. That's not good for your body at all. 
You need to feel good about what you're eating. You need to make sure that you eat the right things. Um, but also, the flip side of managing the plate is managing your mind. You need to be open to the fact that life is an imperfect and ever-shifting thing and that your body is a regenerative being and you're not as fragile as you think. Um, yeah. So, like, little old-fashioned things like picking up food off the ground, you know, eating it, supporting the microbiome. That's all good. What else have I covered? I don't know a lot about sustainability. Ethics is something that I've thought about a lot. And I mean, I don't know if I would currently have it in me to kill an animal myself. And that's a big thing. If you, can, if you can't kill it, are you going to eat it? Um, but it's something that I may do at some point because I feel that it's only right to understand what goes in to my mouth and where it comes from. And if I can't do that, I'll revisit. Um, and health, yeah. So three things. Eat locally. Eat low inflammation. Eat in a way that makes you feel good. If you can do that, you'll live a long and happy life, my friends.